Jobs are sometimes performed in a sequence, moving from workstation to workstation, machine to machine. And this video demonstrates the automatic scheduling of such jobs. It is another one of those advanced videos, typically for shop floor managers, administrators, project managers. This diagram shows an example of some possible workstations on a shop floor. In your case, these may be machines, assembly lines, assembly bays, areas with a special purpose, operations steps. In our example, the job sequence will be cut, bend, weld, paint, ship. I'm looking at the Standard Time Resources page, which typically shows human resources. So think of employees who might be scanning barcodes on the shop floor, office workers who might be using the timesheet, executives, managers, supervisors, and so on. But I am focused right now on machines or workstations with a special skill that the scheduler can use to assign tasks to them. Workstations, assembly areas, or actual machines that employ are operating. There are other types of resources that might be shown here, but I'm focusing on the workstations and machines. The point is tasks must be assigned to these machines or workstations because often those workstations perform only one function or task. They are the process steps in a sequence and they consume machine or workstation time. So let's go over to the project tasks page and we can see three jobs that I have scheduled for the shop floor. Think of these as projects, work orders, sales orders, purchase orders, any lengthy activity with a lifespan regardless of its title. They have tasks under them and these are the process steps to complete the job. So in this case, each task has a skill assigned to them so that the scheduler can assign them to workstations or areas of functional purpose, machines or whatever, step by step. Some of the tasks cannot start until a predecessor has finished. These are called link relationships and that is the purpose of these blue lines that you see here. They are optional but they prevent a task from being scheduled until another one has ended. Now you may be familiar with the projects page. I'll just pop over there. You can see these three jobs that I've scheduled. They're shown on a Gantt chart timeline. It actually looks the same as the project tasks page when you collapse all of the jobs. If you want to create a new job, you can right click on any existing job and browse over to choose duplicate. So that's the fastest way. There are other ways to create jobs, but once you've done that, you can then move that job to the next available time slot, or you can move it to the front of the line if you have hot jobs that need to be done right now, or move it to the back of the line for the low priority jobs. Let's go back over to the users page. You can see where these tasks have been assigned to the workstations and take a look at some other interesting observations. The first is the press break. You can see this is the only workstation of its kind and all the tasks had to be assigned in series on that one workstation. Of course, if you had three of them, all the jobs could be in parallel. So that leads to the question of utilization or over utilization. You can see the TIG welding stations are similar. Here you've got a case where the TIG stations were utilized and you had to schedule tasks in series. And you have another case down here where there are two workstations that are completely unutilized. Paint Booth 2 and Shipping Dock left where the tasks just happen to be scheduled onto other workstations and they are completely non-utilized. Let's go over to the resource allocation page to get another way to visualize utilization. You can see that I'm looking at the next 30 days for the entire shop floor. Of course, you can go over to the left-hand side and open this up and then look at each workstation by clicking clicking on them and seeing how they are allocated out into the future. Of course, we're looking for 40 hours a week there. Look at the entire shop floor to see how that is allocated. Another way to visualize the tasks and job scheduling is to go over to the project task calendar. You can see them on a familiar calendar. So. This definitely gives you an idea where and when the tasks are scheduled to work, how they're allocated, where the bottlenecks are, where the utilization under or over utilization occurs. I wanted to go over to the home all views and just show you how I got to these pages. First one was the users page that showed us the machines. It also show you the users that are scanning barcodes on the shop floor. The next thing I went to was the project tasks icon that showed you the jobs that are being scheduled on the shop floor. And then I went to the 
the project page, which shows you the list of all of your jobs. I then went over to the resource allocation page, which shows you allocation out into the future. And then we went to the task calendar to see tasks on a familiar calendar. So you should have a pretty good overview now of how jobs are scheduled and what to look for when you're getting started. So good luck and let us know if you need any help.